my tying bench. Uh, today, something a little different. We're not actually going to tie anything today. Today, we're just going to do a little, uh, almost like a little class, if you want to call it that. I'm going to try to keep this under 20 minutes. Um, I'm going to go through all the the uh, equipment or the tools that you need to start uh, as, as a fly tire. Um, some of the stuff, and I'll let you know as I go through, is a little bit more advanced and uh, uh, the stuff that you won't need right away. Um, but I just thought I'd, I'd, uh, I'd do this for... For everybody out there that's new and wanting to get into fly tying, and for some of the guys that have been doing it for a while, there's some new products out there as well. So I uh, just thought I'd, uh, yeah, I thought I'd go through it. So um, this is going to be, uh, I'm going to do a, a tools one today, and then I'm going to try to do a materials one, uh, what you should uh, get as a, as a starter, as a beginner. Um, and then I'm going to try to do one as well as, uh, for the more advanced fly tire, what other stuff do you need. Um, after you've got that basic stuff uh, covered. So, all right, <clears throat> so here we go. Uh, switch ED over. So, excuse my my belly. Um, so, gonna start off with just some basic stuff here. Um, not, I'll, get, I'll leave the more, slightly more advanced stuff for later on, but number one, what you're gonna need is obviously a vise of some sort. So, this is the one I use, it's a uh, stone foe. Uh, this is the transformer. Uh, the reason I like the transformer, um, that's just the one I use. I also have used the, it's, uh, it's put away, but I've used the Dyna King for the last 25 years. Um, but uh, this one here I really like because it's got the, the drop jaw for your midge jaw. Um, and then you just pull this little lever, out she comes, and in goes the, the, the larger, actually that goes this way. Right, the larger uh, uh, for the larger um, uh, flies, right? So, uh, and you can adjust it um, here with your. That's how you adjust for the bigger flies, bigger hooks. So, um, and it also comes with the uh, a tube attachment. So, um, like I said, I really like it because of. Uh, it's not in, I always like having the handle. I'll move this over a bit so you guys can see it. I like always having the handle in the down position. Then, right. So now. When I'm doing my tying, my rotary, right? So material clip, it's just to hold your material out of your way. Um, and what I really like about these sto about the stone foe and, and others as well, um, this one here comes with this, you can pick up these, uh, this cool tool rest, uh, tool storage. Um, it looks like a mess, but it's, it's totally out of your way when you're tying, right? So now let's just see if I can do that. So your tying is way over here, right? So. Um, but all your stuff is right there. Um, plus, it's got holes in the base as well for all for all your tools as well. You can put tools in. Um, <clears throat> but that's just that's the stone foe. Go with one that you that you like, right? Uh, uh, you don't have to spend a ton of money. This one is like five six hundred bucks, so you don't have to spend a ton of money as a beginner. Go out and buy a, a beginner's clamp on style or one with a base. Um, inexpensive one at first until you know, yeah, this is something I really want to do, and then go and get a, a proper like a good one right um, this one also you can get a, this is a magnifying glass attachment that just goes into it so alrighty so that's your your vice um, <clears throat> it depends what you're tying too if you're gonna be tying a lot of smaller flies obviously look for these midge type jaws these really small jaws right um, and if you're gonna be tying larger flies more salmon and and tropical and so on you look for a, a, a vise that's got bigger, heavier jaws. Now, th that doesn't mean that this one, like these here, this jaw here, you can see it's quite a bit heavier. This, I, I tie 2 aught, 3 aught, 4 aught, 5 aught, even 6 aught in this one. I haven't tried anything bigger, but up to 6 aught. So, um, really husky, right? And, and strong. <clears throat> so, next, I move on to bobbins. Here's your bobbin just holds your thread is basically all it is uh, there's so many out there I used these ones here for probably the last 15 20 years this style uh, I think this is a, a dr. slick this one actually looks bent so it's probably a really old one um, yeah it's a dr. slick one it's got a little bit of that rubberized thumb pad because that's where your thumb goes when you're tying right your finger and your thumb um, and it's the important thing is right there it's got it's, it's ceramic. It's, it's got a ceramic insert. I really dislike the steel, um, all steel um, um, bobbins because they uh, 
Uh -huh. Actually, yeah, it even says Dr. Slick on this one. Um, I don't like the steel ones because they quite often they'll fray or cut the thread, right? So I always look for ones with a ceramic. Um, this is another one, ceramic. This is all ceramic instead of steel on ceramic. Sorry, keep it out there. Instead of steel on cer uh, with an insert of ceramic, this is all ceramic. So it is a little bit, you got to be a little bit more careful with it because it can chip, right? But uh, this is probably, has been my favorite for, I think this is a TMCO for probably 20 years. I uh, love these ones. Lately, in the last couple of years, I've changed over to these, the Stonefall ones. Uh, I really like these. They've got a really nice big thumb pad. They're really comfortable in the hand. They've got that ceramic insert, you know, as you can see in there. Um, <clears throat> they're just a really nice, I love the weight of them as well. Um, you can get auto bobbins. Uh, uh, Norvice makes auto bobbins. Um, I think right bobbin is one. I'm not sure. Um, there's a few other auto bobbins out there. Um, but again, I wouldn't as a beginner. I looked at probably this one or this one. Um, this one is about, uh, I think they're about $15 in the, in the fly shops. This one here is about $29, $27, and this one's about $35, so um, the stone foam. <coughs> so that's your bobbins. Um, next, uh, is scissors. Now, scissors is one of those things where you can go crazy and spend a ton of money, um, or just go cheap and buy multiple. So it's up to you, again, as a beginner, I usually recommend people go out and pick up less expensive ones. So um, like these here, these are from Loon, Loon Outdoors. Um, I think these are about 25 bucks. Um, I know uh, a few other companies, Golf, um, here I'll show you, this is the resin, but Golf, this company, uh, they make uh, a, an entry level scissor now. Um, but uh, so does Anvil, it's another one makes it entry level they're decent scissors this one I like the fact that this one here oh it doesn't fit my thumb I can just bend it open there you go now it fits right oops so um, I like them but I also find that uh, because there's the, I mean the screw gets loose sometimes and stuff I mean it's a these are old pair too right probably 15 20 years old but the one I always recommend believe it or not to people is these things these are just embroidery scissors from Michaels they're six dollars five dollars something like that and you go through five six pairs of them who cares right they're five bucks they're better than uh, than going to spend 50 or 60 dollars on a good pair as a beginner I'm talking <clears throat> as you get going um, you can pick up better scissors and uh, um, I'm a pro staffer with renomed which is out of Poland um, there's but there's other good scissor companies out there as well uh, I think Andromedas I think they're called uh, they, uh, they supply quite a few tools. They got some good scissors. Um, uh, I can't remember the name of the other scissor. It's a really good one. I just can't remember. But these are renowned, you know, renowned scissors. Uh, they're actually made for the medical community originally. Uh, they went into fly tying. <clears throat> this is a long pair. It's uh, about seven inches long. Um, I use these for like big cuts and cutting deer hair off of, off of uh, the hide and stuff. And then I've got... A bent pair. Uh, I'll do it this way. Right, that way. So you got a bent pair for 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 making the, the night like for shaping things. Um, I've got a semi bent pair. It's just the tip is bent, and then I've got a straight, and then I also have a black micro one. These are super sharp, super mi micro. Right. So, um, but these are fifty sixty dollars a pair. Right. So. As a beginner, I always try to tell people. Now, I mean, if you got the money and you, and you, and you want to go into it, you go into it and get get these, right? Uh, but as a beginner, I always recommend that you, you just go a little bit uh, more on the inexpensive side. Um, you can get the more expensive stuff as you go. Um, next, let's go with some uh, <clears throat> hair stackers. So hair stackers are important when you're doing. Uh, fly tying with uh, any kind of hair like deer and elk and moose and, and, and caribou and all that kind of stuff you want to be able to line the tips up so what you do is you use one something this is a bigger one um, and you just put the uh, the tips in you put it into here tips facing in and then you stack you just bump it on the table or on your hand or whatever like that and then as you pull it out the hair will stay in this piece and they'll be sticking out and you can grab them and they're all lined up right and you can get them in multiple sizes 
you can get them in uh, in wood, you can get them in metal, you can get them in plastic, all kinds of stuff. So um, this one here's got uh, a couple of different insert sizes, so you can depending on what size you wanna wanna do, right? So, right? Mm. Uh, it, like I said, it, th those aren't very expensive, so you don't have to. They're I think this one might have been fifteen, eighteen dollars. This one. I think it's a stone for one. This one is probably 25 bucks, um, something like that. They're not bad. Uh, and and you, you, again, you don't have to go crazy spending your money on them, but uh, it's something you do definitely want. Um, whip finishers. Now, there's several different types of whip finishers out there. Um, I suggest as a beginner, you learn right away how to do hand whip finish. Um, <clears throat> it's just something that uh, it really comes handy, especially when you're doing those flies that get those big bulky heads and stuff, sometimes using a, an actual tool gets in the way. So um, get used to learning how to use the, uh, the actual, uh, um, uh, the, the do it by hand is, 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 is superior if you can learn it. And it's not that difficult. It just takes some practice. So, But this is the type I use, the whip finisher. There is another style. I can't remember what they're called, the Griffin, I think, or something like that. Um, it's a different style, uh, used quite a bit actually in, in the UK, um, and you can get them all over the place. I don't like them. I found that they're, I don't like the way they work, but whatever. Um, so there's this type, um, and then there's a smaller, and then there's the larger. I seem to always gravitate to the larger because I find I can just, I can, it doesn't matter whether I'm doing a big fly or a small fly, it works. Um, these work on small flies, but not really that well on big flies, so um, yeah. They're cheap, it's uh, under 10 bucks. <clears throat> now this one, I only have one sample with me. I couldn't find my other one, but it's a dubbing spinner. Um, I This is the cheap, cheap one. These are like eight or $10, they're just a weighted, uh, this is just weighted. And then it's got the two hooks, so when you're doing a dubbing loop, you can put this in between your dubbing loop and as you spin it, it creates a noodle, and then you wrap that. Um, if you watch some of my videos, especially leeches and stuff, You'll see me using this quite often. Um, I, I've had the the uh, the auto ones or whatever where you just it's, it looks like this, but then you can just spin with your thumb on the bottom and it just spins it up. I don't know. I, for some reason, I don't like them. Um, but again, if you want to spend a few extra dollars, you can pick one up and try. These are like again under ten dollars. I really like these ones. They're just great. Or if you do a lot of dubbing, or, or if you want to make a lot of dubbing um, brushes. Um, Use one of these. These are uh, this is a, uh, a frother for your coffee or whatever, and basically you just cut off the end, the frothing end, and just make a bend, and then you just give it a spin, right? Real quick, whoop, done. You're finished. You don't have to sit there and spin it. So you can just put that on, done, done, right? Works really well, especially when you're doing bigger, um, bigger brushes. So um, next. Let's talk uh, bodkins. Now this is, again, something super simple. Um, you don't have to spend a lot of money on these at all. Uh, they're just a, a needle, if you want to, right? A needle point. That's all it really is. It's for applying um, uh, um, glue and stuff like that, right? When you want to apply your, you can see how gooey, uh, gooed this one up is. This one I use, this one primarily for, uh, for UV resin, to spread the UV resin. Um, <clears throat> sometimes use it to split. I do use these all the time to split my thread to do a split thread technique um, for for um, making dubbing loops and stuff. I do a split thread. Um, so there's all kinds of them out there, but they're cheap. They're like I think this this stone for one might be fifteen, eighteen dollars, fourteen, something like that. Five, six dollars, five, six dollars, five dollars, four dollars in an embroidery store. It's just again a bodkin, right? So um, this one's kind of neat because it's got this on it, and that'll take me into my next uh, uh, segue, which is going to be dubbing brushes. So this one is a bodkin dubbing brush. So you can take this. This is like a wire, um, like like wire brush material, and you can use that to, to brush out your your dubbing and stuff, right? <clears throat> Works really well. Um, I just like it. I, I wish this would have been on the end, right? But obviously you can't because you've got this. Now it would have been nice to almost have it on the other end, but the other end, this is a multi-tool. The other end, it's got a half hitch tool. You see the hole? So you do a half hitch over top of this, put it up against your eye and pull it on, and then you, you've just created a half hitch. So this, this is a multi kind of tool. 
You can always just buy these. These are just uh, your battery brushes, a Canadian tire. You can get them in, in uh, brass, silver. I got a three pack of brass, silver, and plastic. Um, you can pick one of these up. These are fly tying one. You can get them at any fly shop or most fly shops. This one I've had probably for 15 years. Um, but what I do right away is put on some Velcro. Whoop. I glue on a piece of Velcro right there. Always do. Because um, I, Val I find Velcro is the best thing to pull dubbing out. Um, there's this one here. It's from Stoneful again. Right? It's got a brush on one end and it's got the hook a part of the Velcro built onto the other end. Um, I find it works really well because it is actual Velcro in there. You can, I, I'm pretty sure, I haven't tried yet, but I'm pretty sure I can peel that out and then cut that shape and put another one back in. Right? But I think my, believe it or not, love this thing because I like the brush part of it for brushing out dubbing and brushing out uh, deer hair and all that stuff and, and, and feathers. I really like this part. But when it comes to actual a dubbing brush for pulling dubbing out, I don't think there's anything better than the old popsicle stick. Piece of Velcro on the end, popsicle stick, done. And I just go to Michael's or Home Depot or whatever and I buy a bunch of this Velcro and I just use the, the hook end. That's it. And it's sticky back. This will last me probably six months. Take it off, put another one on. Um, and obviously, popsicle sticks are cheap, right? So, um, next... Um, Let's talk about some uh, hackle pliers. There's several types of hackle pliers out there. You can go absolutely insane. Some of them are $50, $60 and more. Um, some of them are like $4.95. This is what comes with your, usually comes with your cheap, uh, um, your cheap kits. It's just, you, you just push on it and it opens up and then let go and it grabs the, the, the feather, right? Uh, they work, not a big fan of them, but they work. Uh, the one I found that I've gravitated towards over the years and uh, really, really liked in the last couple of years since I picked it up is this type. This is a stone foil. It's got a spring on it. You can get one without a spring or a longer spring. Um, again, it's just got a little clamp. You just open up and close, and it's got a little bit of a rubberized pad, which helps hold the, uh, the feather in. And then you can just put your finger in there and turn, right? Or you can hold it this way. It's up to you, but I really like the spring. I'm a bit of a heavy-handed because I'm a, I'm a millwright by trade and uh, a little heavy-handed sometimes so this I break feathers quite easily and this helps not break them. Um, <clears throat> next, these you can get the uh, Marc Pettijon kits or whatever you want um, for, for um, you use this if you want to as an example get uh, marabou or, or deer hair or something like that get it in here and then put it into a dubbing loop and spin it up, right? So you can do all kinds of different uh, fox and, and rabbits and all kinds of stuff. So there's uh, there's all kinds of these this type of uh, clamp. Um, this one happens to be from Stonefo. It's the large. And then I don't have the medium, but I got the small, right? So right there's the large and the small there. Um, but uh, and I like them, don't get me wrong, they're really good. Petijons are really good. There's a few others out there that are really good. But if you want to start out, go to Dollar Store. These little clips work like a charm. They're the little ones with the magnets on it for the fridge. And they're super tight. You look at them, make sure they're tight. When you're looking at the package, make sure it's tight. It's, when it comes together, it's tight. But you can get these in a long and a short. And I'm telling you, for $2 and you get six of them, they're great, um, especially for the beginner. I mean, they're, they're just great. And um, I found I haven't had a single problem using these. So, right? Next. Another little trick if you're tying longer flies, um, excuse me, if you're tying longer flies, um, is to use little hair clips like this. They, you can then, then you can clip it onto. Like if you've got your, your vise in there and your long stuff is held back, you can just put it over your long stuff and hold it and it keeps it out of your way. I, it's a silly little thing, but believe me, these things come in really handy. You can get them in multiple different sizes. So, uh, One I forgot with the, uh, the using the clamps. There's a, um, a Loon Outdoors has this one. Uh, it's got this one here. It's a bit of a longer tool. 
and you just again same concept it opens up and then you can put it into your anything i like this really like this one for longer fibers and for like pipe flies and that kind of stuff don't like it for the uh, smaller leeches and stuff um maybe it's just because i haven't used it enough but uh I, I like it for the bigger stuff i prefer these for the smaller so um wax especially nowadays guys if you're using any of these non-waxed threads these uh um these uh, uh gsp threads uh nano silk from semperfly anything like that they are slippery they're super super strong and they're they're a, they're a, a godsend to fly tires because you don't break your your uh, your um, your thread as much but they are slippery so you do it has a tendency especially on slippery materials like deer hair and a few quite a few others um, they have a tendency of let it doesn't hold as well so you've got to do something to do that so wax okay so this is uh, wonder wax it's actually made for fly tying um, this is an old one you can't even get these anymore super fly no uh, super tack um, a bunch of companies make them the one I've, uh, I really like is this one here it's just a little it's a hard cobbler's wax it's like hard um, and it you just run it through as you can see as you can see you just run it through your, th your uh, through your thread hey, you just when your threads there you just run it on so what I'll do is as an example here's my thread I'll just grab my I wax through my thread and I'll just pull it like that and now I've just waxed my thread that's it right so that'll just help hold things um, again cheap stuff this is five six bucks these are eight bucks or something like that but uh, yeah so that's that's your wax um, if you're using a UV uh, UV resin if you start using that right away uh, especially if you're doing like coronamids and stuff you're gonna need something to cure it so you can there's all kinds of lights out there I picked this little guy up cheap cheap 19 bucks or something like that on uh, Amazon I really like this one because uh, it really focuses the light right because it's so small so it really focuses the light well um, this one here is from uh, from Semperfly it's a little bigger but again it focuses the light really well it's but it is bigger in comparison I'll show you the two right so um, so this one I, I really like using this one for larger flies but uh, I use it for both so um, both battery operated and there's there's several others you can get little tiny ones you can get bigger ones Loon Outdoors has their own and Golf has their own and all these other manufacturers have their own some of them work better like if you get like a, a golf resin the golf one works better with the golf resin um, but I found this one here works on all of them um, like works really well actually on all of them so and again $19 or something on, on Amazon um, always have a lighter of some sort doesn't matter a bit with this one whatever I like doing this just for cleanup at the end for thread cleanup and stuff um, I like having these these are like electrical uh, I get alligator clips and they're just little blocks so I can put my flies in them for not so much only for display but more for letting them dry right especially if I'm using like a Sally Hansen's or anything else like that or head cement to let to coat my flies um, I, uh, I I like having something like this to uh, so I got a, I think I got 20 of them for 20 bucks on, on Amazon um, and then I really like having some a variety of felt pens um, colors because uh, quite often what I do I'll tie a lot of flies with white because you don't see the thread mostly you don't see the thread except for the head unless you're doing like a thread bodied coronamid um, but you only see it for the head so I use white for everything and then I'll just find whatever whatever I'm tying if my materials are more brown do a brown head or I'll do a hot spot red head or a hot spot orange head or a you know hot spot green head right whatever I want to do right so um, having some felts around is, is pretty pretty important as well and another thing like if you don't have a material uh, clip or material clamp for your vise you need to be able to like a, a tool a caddy sorry you need to be able to put all your tools somewhere really like these these are from Renzetti Right? This is a Renzetti one. You can see that. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there, Renzetti. Uh, they're just foam. 
right? But uh, it's really good because I, I put all my, uh, like my, you put your resins in there and your glues in there and you can have all your scissors and all your tools, right? So I, I kind of do a, a little bit of both. This one here is more of my, my backup tools um, and then my, my, the stuff that's on my vice and my tools that I use on an everyday basis. Right. So, um, besides that, I mean, there is there's a bunch of other stuff you can uh, go out and get. But as a beginner, what I would tell you, um, if you're a beginner, I would tell you to go out, pick up one of these, doc, the Doctor Slick ones. They're they're inexpensive. They're about ten bucks. They're, they're, make sure they got a a uh, ceramic insert. So you need that. I'd say you go and pick up a whip finisher, but learn how to do the uh, whip hand whip finish. Um, pick up a whoop, stacker, pick up some scissors. I would buy one curved pair, one straight pair if you can. Um, and again, if you're a beginner, don't want to spend too much money, just look at these embroidery type scissors at Michael's or Fanny's Fabrics or Joann's or, where, or wherever, Hobby Lobby, wherever you're from. Um, they're just inexpensive, but they work really well. Um, pick up a bodkin. Again, cheap hackle plier of some sort. Don't have to buy the, the more expensive ones, but this one's only like 14 bucks. It's not bad. Um, and that's really about all that I would suggest you get right away. Um, there is other things, like I said, there's these uh, the dubbing, um, the, the dubbing uh, tools to, to, to dubbing clamps. Um, there's that kind of stuff that, do you want to do that right away? I don't know. So, but if you do, I would suggest just go out and buy the cheap ones for now and then go out and pick up the better ones later. Um, I always like having a lighter around. You definitely need wax, especially with those GSP threads, the TechStream threads, the Semperfly, Nano Silk, all those. You absolutely must have some, some wax. And then uh, if you're a bit more advanced and you want to play around a bit, I just pick up a, go a cheap coffee grinder and uh, all I use this for is, uh, uh, it's pretty well brand new, but you can see in there, I uh, use it for um, combining dubbing. So I'll take like a, a I don't know, just a, 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 semper, a, a seals fur uh, dubbing or a semper seal, like an artificial seals fur, and I'll throw some, uh, some uh, more sparkly type stuff in it, whatever it happens to be. It doesn't matter what brand. And throw that in and blend that together and make my own blends up. Um, but... Uh, that's again, that's something for somebody that's past, way past the beginner stage. Um, oh, and the other thing you definitely want to pick up, sorry, I totally forgot, is some uh, head cement. So this is just regular head cement you can buy at any fly shop, but what I recommend and what almost everybody I know uses is Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails. Um, and buy this Sally Hansen's, not this Sally Hansen's. Not this one. It is still called Howard as Nails. It's called the Advanced Strength Formula. Um, I find over time this one discolors. This one I've never had a fly discolor on me ever. Um, this like this is coated actually. It's hard to see, but that's coated with three coats of Sally's. <clears throat> right. So uh, and then if you want to get into the resins, pick up yourself some resin. This is, happens to be Golf's resin. There's the Semperfly No Tack resin. Uh, I picked this stuff up on the AliExpress from China, I tr just to try it out. Uh, eh, it's okay. Um, I don't like the viscosity of this, but um, whatever. It, it works for some. And there's other stuff out there. Like There's this one. I find this witchcraft one. I actually did a, a review, a product review on coatings. You can go back and take a look if you want. Um, and then there's also your crazy glues. This happens to be M3, uh, M300, but there's this, there's regular crazy glue, there's uh, a bunch of different brands that have the instant glue, right? So, Alrighty, <clears throat> the other things, guys, that you will definitely need is a good light. Um, you absolutely have to have a good light. Uh, if you don't have good light, you're, it's going to be terrible, uh, especially if you're older. It's really difficult to see, um, you, so you need a good light. Now I'll try to show you guys the light I'm using. This is the one I'm using. It's a long oops, uh, LED light. It's uh, 
It's about, uh, I don't know, the light itself is about 14, 16 inches long, the light portion of it. And then it's on an articulated arm that goes down to a base. Um, and it's got uh, on off and then it's got different color, different color modes on it. And then you can pick your intensity with the brightness and stuff. But ought lights are really good. Um, but this here is a, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, Tensor, T-E-N-S-O-R. Um, from um, uh, Staples is where I picked them up. So uh, they're really good. But that uh, if you're going to spend money on anything, I would spend money on your light and on your vice. Those are the two things that I would, there's where I would start with my, my more expensive stuff. All the other stuff, it's, again, 10 bucks here, 20 bucks there. It, after, over time, you can replace the less expensive, less quality stuff as you go but if you're gonna start off and you want to spend good money on two things light vice all right well i hope that helped you guys out i'm gonna switch over to my other camera uh, i really hope that helped you guys out a bit um i know it's a little bit of a longer video uh, and i'll be doing a, a second part to it uh, where i talk more about materials dubbings and feathers and, and that kind of stuff threads that kind of that kind of stuff so um uh, I'll, I'll, we'll get into that more, but I just hope this helps, uh, especially the beginners. I know I, I've writ written a couple of articles as well on what to pick up as a, as a beginner, but I just wanted to do a video because sometimes it's just easier to listen to a video than it is to uh, to, to read something. I, some people like reading, some don't. Um, I'm a person that likes videos myself, so um, yeah. Just I, I hope it helped, um, and I hope it uh, it uh, will you know won't scare you too much uh, there's there's a lot of tools that are required um, but again you don't need nine scissors like I have two pairs right um, you don't need 16 bobbins two that's it I always like having two one for black one for white right if you want stuff for others you can always change it or you can buy more but you can always change these out and when you do there's one thing I did forget is a threader this is just again from a from a sewing shop and you just put it in and then oops, put it in and then you put your th your thread through and pull it out it's hard to get the thread through sometimes so pick up a thread these are cheap 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 right um but yeah like i said i hope it doesn't scare you guys off too much and uh, if you guys have any questions please feel free make a comment find me on facebook pm me uh, i'm more than happy to help out uh, the beginner and the more advanced um to you know with 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 certain tools and, and what's good and what's not and what uh, where to find stuff uh, keep your eyes open everywhere you go I mean I everywhere I go whether it's a shoppers drug mart a London drugs a, a hobby shop it doesn't matter where I go I always keep my eyes open for tools that can help me with my fly time right um, and storage capacity stuff as well like I do a lot of uh, I do I use a lot of um, I don't know if I can show you guys I'll turn it I like these here for all my my threads, right? All my threads and stuff are all in here. Right? I got about ten of these all over the place, right? So it just helps with uh, with uh, keeping things organized. Um, so, but and then as you can see in the background up there, I got all my whoop, that way. <laughs> that's hard to do. All there. It's a it's a closet that I put a pegboard up in. And that's all my materials are in there and and around me on my desk but I'll do another video about storage and stuff like that at another time but um, yeah I hope you guys enjoyed that one if you did thumbs up share with anybody that you know that's a beginner please uh, let them know and uh, yeah if you have any questions like I said leave a comment or contact me on uh, Facebook and uh, and uh, I'll do what I can to, to help you guys out so Thailand's everyone